I'm here at HPE Discover with Tom Bradich, and edge computing, of course, has been a big part of what HPE's strategy has been for several years now. But what are some of the complexities that, that have uh, kind of evolved as you've evolved the edge? Well, the edge, let me define, is everywhere else that's not the data center or the cloud. So from an ITOT perspective, it's just everywhere else. It's right here in this building at this event. It's in your home, it's in a manufacturing floor, it's on a smart city street, a campus, a branch. A battlefield could be an edge. Also a wind farm could be an edge. A crop field could be an edge. An oil rig, whether it be out in the Gulf of Mexico or somewhere else is an edge. So these edges have indeed great complexity. And in fact, one of the three things that happen at the edge is compute and as you said, edge computing. But that's one of three C's, a good way to put it. There's connectivity, compute, as you pointed out, and the third is control and control systems. And those three C's are extremely important to make an edge intelligent and to make an edge more productive, not just one or the other or both, but all three as well. And let me give you a quick metaphor on the value of these three C's. Most of us have been to a physician, a doctor, a medical doctor, <clears throat> and if that doctor was to come and connect with you and he looked in your eyes, he's using a sensor called his eyes, some instruments tools, looked in your ears, listened to your heart, another sensor taking analog data from you, a thing, at the edge, which is his office, that's the edge. <clears throat> There's billions of us running around at the edge. That's right. And also uh, took some of your bodily fluids, you know, as well, and collected and connected. That's the first C. The second C is is it went off to the lab and went and computed and analyzed and created nice beautiful bar charts or pie charts of your history of weight, your cholesterol, uh, some of the uh, elements within your bodily fluids, etc. And then if the physician came back and just handed you that insight and then walked away and said, see you next year, how would you feel? Well, you'd say, wait a minute, what do I do with all this? How do I act on it? Or how do I control? Or the third C. How do I take control of my diet, of the medications I take? Do I need to control myself by going to another physician for another test? So the control part is extremely, extremely valuable at the edge. And in fact, it's the most valuable thing when you think about it in the Internet of Things. So because things so need to be controlled. Let me interrupt for a second because so HP I know has a uh, compute, it's a pretty obvious thing. Right. HP has been a server company for a really long time. Networking, there's been various flavors of networking, Aruba kind of being the, the most recent and probably the most relevant at the edge. A form of connectivity. Form right. of con connectivity. Uh, so so where, what about control? I, I, don't, I don't know much about where HPE fits in in the control. But it's a very good question. In fact, last November, uh, very recently, we announced a set of control system products. So we are in the business organically. But before we did that, we partnered with other companies that have control systems and have in industrial networks that affect control and have data acquisition systems. These are all uh, technologies, control systems included, that are called OT, operational technologies. Okay. And they're very, very important to have at the edge and converge them at the edge. Now, um, to answer your question, we launched a brand of products called OT Link. And that's our first uh, foray into five OT products and also an OT platform software. So now we have that third dimension of controls and we also have industrial networks which are beyond Wi-Fi and beyond uh, Ethernet. And we have also data acquisition which is direct connection of sampling, for example, voltages on a smart grid, which is an edge for a power company, to determine how the electricity flow is going. So within 700 milliseconds, we can switch the electricity flow to avoid your home from experience a blackout or a brownout. So that control system is very important. So that, that switching is where the, is, the, is the act of control. Right, a lot of times it's called actuation. It's not collecting data from the thing. You know, that's done with connecting and data acquisition as well as a Wi-Fi network, for example, from Aruba, or a, a CAN bus from uh, the uh, OT-Link and the Edgeline brands. But it's actually after you collect and like this metaphor with you at the physician's office. It's what you do next and how do you actuate you know, and take action. Our invention, we've invented a new product category, not just a new product, but a new product category. Okay. Now, what, what's the difference? There was a day when there were no notebook computers. I think you would agree. Maybe you don't there, remember it, but there was no, a day. I, I remember that day. Okay. Then there was a day there was one. So the first one, right, uh, is the new product category. And then every notebook computer or laptop after that was a new product in an existing category, right, that was the event. Same with the first car, automobile, et cetera. So we created a new product category called Converged Edge Systems. And this is where we converge at the edge, IT, definition of IT, compute, storage, and networking, right, and management, right, we converge all that with OT. What's OT? Control systems and data acquisition systems. May I use a metaphor? Sure. Use it. 
There was a day where this thing, a smartphone, I happen to have an Apple smartphone here, there was a day where the cell phone part of this was separate from everything else. You just had a cell phone, and I had one of the early Motorola ones uh, years ago. It had nothing else but a phone. And then some visionaries, and, and let me suggest that uh, Steve Jobs, God rest his soul, uh, he suggested that, well, we could get in the business and put a music player in there. You remember that iPod that I did? I think I'll stick it in here. What are you talking about, Steve? You're a computer company. What are you doing in the music player business? I can understand it's a computer that plays music, but you're also in the cell phone business. And uh, perhaps fictitiously, he said, hey, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to cram a high, uh, you know, a high performance, high resolution digital camera. What? You're going to compete with the camera industry? Wait a minute, remember, we're, that's a cell phone and a music player. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to put in a GPS system. And not only that, your wallet. And not only that, a flashlight. And not only that, a high definition music player. So what did Steve Jobs with Apple, and of course the Android people, and a little bit of uh, BlackBerry Motorola before them, right? What did they do? They took consumer devices on you as an edge. You had your text, your camera, your GPS, your cell phone, your music player. Maybe it was a uh, Sony Walkman, perhaps, in the past. And they converged them all on a single device. That's called physical convergence. Now, hold that thought. We have imputed that idea when we walked out to the edge. So let me pick an edge, the manufacturing floor. We walked out in the manufacturing floor and we saw control systems, data acquisition systems, industrial networks. And we brought with us, as you point out, our uh, world famous Hewlett Packard Edge Compute, our world famous Aruba Wi-Fi technologies, our world famous storage, right, that we brought out. And we said, but why don't we put all those six or seven things together in a single box? Hence the birth of the first converged edge system, similar to this metaphor, the birth of the first smartphone for the consumer. So what I like to say is we do for the edge what Apple did for the consumer. We converged what used to be separate all in one box. We also do for the edge what Compaq did, and I'm going back, 30 years ago when they introduced the first open architecture into the data center, which was fundamentally held captive by companies like Sun, Digital, IBM, uh, Risk Technologies, proprietary mainframes, right? And now 98% of data centers are this open x86 architecture. Yep. When we go out to the edge, we see closed, proprietary, inflexible technologies that we're seeking to open up through software defining on x86 platforms and integrating with the OT. All right, well, that's, uh, I'm curious to see where that goes. Well, thanks. We have uh, great uh, deployments. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh, several manufacturers right now that are deploying. So maybe next time we talk, we can have them join us and talk about uh, what it's going to be like. Because me saying how wonderful it is is like my mother calling me handsome. But when we have a third party say it, it it's much more impactful. I think you would agree. I, I do look forward to hearing what the customers have to say. Okay, very good. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for uh, having me. It's a pleasure to be here.